Apologies for the, as Viviana does makeup would say, pineapple bun on top of my head right now. It was a bit of a rough weekend in a good way, but I decided I wanted to start the makeup intro of this video with a bare face because I always feel like when you film the intro to a makeup video with your full face already done and then you have to transition to yourself wearing no makeup, it's like not a good look for anybody. So I feel like you guys are already seeing, seeing me with a bare face now, so I'll just take you through to the very end. And it's very inspired by, you guys know that I'm an avid watcher of the Hannah Mags vlogs that upload every Sunday. And I was very inspired by Hannah's makeup, which hasn't changed at all, but I was just watching it and it struck me that I wanted to replicate the look. So what it basically is, is she only lines her upper lash line with a thin black liquid line. And then she keeps her lower lid entirely bare. So that the other thing that I am endeavoring to do is to become a bold lip during the day wearer. I kind of want to be one of those girls that can just like rock a red lipstick on the middle of a Tuesday. So I'm not entirely there yet, but what I have been doing is playing around with my bright lipsticks and wearing them very kind of sheared out, almost like a stain. I, I kind of wanted to call this video Everyday May Makeup, although if you watch Lily Pebbles, she's doing an Everyday May vlog series. So I guess it's like kind of stealing, but I mean, the rhyme is universal, everyday May. So here's my everyday May makeup look, and I hope you like it. I've been foregoing primer on a pretty daily basis, but I have been really digging this product so much. This is the Suntegrity 5-in-1 Natural Moisturizing Face Sunscreen. I always rave about the Juice Beauty CC Cream, but some people don't care for it because it does have a, it does have a relatively strong scent. This is completely unscented and I even like it slightly better than the Juice Beauty CC Cream, which is saying a lot. I'm going to use this as my all over base to start. So I don't know if you can already see kind of the difference that that does in just kind of evening out my skin. This is like an ideal product for someone like me who doesn't need or want a lot of coverage, but um, does kind of want the sun protection and the very kind of like basic evening out. Next, I am going to conceal lightly under my eyes and the remnants of potentially the worst pimple I've ever had in my entire life. Um, it's like still kind of sitting under the skin, actually. I kind of feel like I should have popped it and I didn't, but anyway, we don't really need to have pimple talk on this video. I'm gonna conceal under my eyes and around my nose and my ugly pimple with the Studio 78 corrector in At Dawn, I think. I'm gonna go back and do a bit of pinpoint concealing over this with this, but this is kind of like my concealing technique. So I, I sort of pat the Studio 78 on and I don't kind of like fully blend it in yet. Excuse me. I'm going to now kind of go over additionally with the RMS Uncover Up in number 11, just kind of like on my cheeks and nose and chin. And then I'm going to blend it all in with a foundation brush. Besides that pimple, I gotta say my skin's been in really good shape lately. It's like really not dry anymore. I don't know if WTF happened, um, if like my hormones just changed or I underwent some profound internal health and well-being transformation, but my skin has literally changed from dry and dehydrated to normal in the span of like two or three months. It's really freaking weird. Like I don't really know what to attribute it to. <laughs> We're gonna blend with the Real Techniques buffing brush. And like I said, I'm going to do a tiny bit of pinpoint concealing with a Stila number no. four brush. This is just like one of the smaller brushes I have, and I'm just going to kind of dip in 
Any of you watched Lisa Eldridge's latest video? If anyone has tips for what I should do about this, if I like need to go get it extracted or certainly don't really want to like scar my skin. Now I'm going to powder a little bit just to set all of that in place with the 100% pure healthy flawless skin foundation powder in white peach. Real Techniques multitask brush. Next, I've still just been consistently reaching for my Studio 78 bronzer in desert sand. It's just like my favorite bronzer of life, but I have been using a new brush with it. Typically, I use the MAC 187. I do find that for this bronzer, you need to use a Duo Fiber Stippling Brush because it's extremely pigmented. So I had been experimenting with using the Real Techniques Dual Fiber Face Brush, which comes in that set of three, and I last month in April favorites, I was really loving, and still I am the smaller one for blending out cream blush, but I've also really been liking using the bigger one for my bronzer, which I can't really show you because it's all crumbled and near the end of this one. So I'm just gonna give my skin a little bit of color. I do find that this brush applies bronzer even more sheerly and less color than the MAC 187. So if you want a very sheer application of a pigmented product, I would really recommend this brush. I'm going to go with my Chanel blush in Turbulent. I'm pretty sure this is probably discontinued. It's old. I have three Chanel blushes and they're all quite old at this point, but I'm going to use them up. So I'm just going to apply that to the apples of my cheeks with a Sigma F10. And then for just a little bit of additional glow because I haven't really been using a luminizer or anything in at the base step. So I still have been, I feel like I've been talking about this a lot recently, it's the RMS Living Luminizer and I've just been reaching for it really exclusively. And you know when you just like fall back in love with products, this one is just like a tried and true. So I'm just gonna put this on the top of my cheekbones. brows which is oh so boring and I know you guys don't really need to hear me talk about it anymore but just a swipe of the all natural face vegan brow wax to give my brows some kind of grip and then I'm going to fill them in with the Tarte Amazonian clay volumizing brow powder in medium brown amazing love it Okay, my brows aren't being super cooperative today, but this is completely good enough for an everyday look. So on an, for an everyday, I really forego eye primer for the most part, unless I'm like doing a cream shadow, but kind of for a bare minimum, I think I may have done this in my last, you know, everyday makeup look of the month or something, but I will dip into my Jane Iredell Daytime Eyeshadow Kit, this middle shade right here, Cappuccino, is just kind of like a perfect, define the crease lightly color and I just use a MAC 217 and it's just so easy. This is actually coming off like a little bit darker than it normally does because I did my makeup over the weekend with this brush and I didn't wash it and it has a little bit of darker brown on it but you know whatever I'm just gonna go with it.
I do feel that my eyes always look a little bit better if I have some definition to the crease. Now this is gonna be a super sort of minimalist eye look, which is kind of my MO, and I hope you guys aren't bored of seeing it. So my lips feel really dry. I'm just gonna throw some Alovi tinted lip butter on really quickly. Zuzu Luxe Liquid Eyeliner in Raven. I'm going to do as thin of a line as possible all the way in to the edge, and I'm going to barely flick it out. to go for the kind of stamping approach initially and then I kind of gently pull out and try and like connect the dots basically. Now I'm going to line the upper waterline to just kind of fill in the gaps. You know actually this is like a little tip that I have been doing. Once my eyeliner kind of sets I've been curling my lashes before I'll line the upper waterline because I find that uh, there's more transfer of eyeliner to the eyelash curler when I curl after already having lined the upper waterline and in an effort to keep my Kevin Aquan eyelash curler in as good condition as possible, I'm trying to not get as much product transfer onto it basically. Now we're going to line the upper waterline and I'll either use the Tarte Skinny Smolder Eyes in Onyx, which I love. This really stays put, it's extremely pigmented, it's extremely long wearing. My only gripe is that I've blasted through it. I've gone through this probably faster than any other eyeliner and I think it's because you have to sharpen it so frequently because it is such kind of like a smudgy product, but it's smudgy while also having really amazing lasting power. So. I'll kind of interchange using this with my Jane Iredale Basic Black Eye Pencil, which does transfer a little bit, but I think that that can kind of have its pros. So if you kind of want it to transfer down to the lower lash line a little bit, like some days I do, you know, I haven't been wearing anything on the lower lash line, but if you wear this, you will kind of get a little bit of color transfer down below. So. It just sort of depends. Today I'm going to wear the Tarte because for the video I want to keep the lash line looking really, really kind of bare. I find that the key to this look is to really do lashings and lashings of mascara. I always do air quotes around phrases or terms that I feel are like blogger or YouTuber centric and I feel so like silly saying them, but yeah, I feel like I can't even think of who said that, but lashings of mascara means a lot of mascara. I also want to say, I can't believe I'm actually also going to use this not specific to blogging and YouTubing phrase, but I'm totally going to. My lashes have been 100% on fleek this month. It's, and I think that it's because, you know how like sometimes your lashes like look amazing and nothing has changed and then sometimes they're just like driving you nuts and they're like short and thin and whatever. I think it has to do with the phases of regrowth that your lashes and like your hair in general goes through. So my lashes have just been like exceptionally like long and full and thick for the last like two weeks and I think it's just like the phase that I'm in with my like lash regrowth but I kind of want it to last forever because I'm loving it. So I'm gonna first do two coats of the Lily Lolo Basic Black Mascara and then I'm gonna comb through that and plump them up further with the Bare Minerals Flawless Definition Mascara. So that's really it for the eyes. Again, like I, it's weird for me to not put anything on the lower lash line, but I, for some reason, have really been loving the way that it looks. I even have tried this look and n not doing any eyeliner, but still putting mascara on the lower lashes, and I actually like it completely bare, 
period, like nothing on the lower lashes to even define it or whatever. So now it's time for lips. What I'm going to do is use one of my new Bite Beauty lipsticks in Lingonberry, which is a really, really pretty purpley, pinky, fuchsia, magenta. But instead of doing it full on, I'm going to kind of do the Lisa Eldridge technique. Again, I've seen her do this where she applies a brightly colored lipstick, kind of like a stain and really just kind of like applies a little bit of color to the top and the bottom and then really pats it in to the lips and shears it out. You guys can see kind of my baby steps towards being a during the day bold lip wearer. So once I'm kind of satisfied with the intensity of the color of the lipstick, I'm gonna go over it because it is like quite dry feeling on the lips as the lipsticks kind of tend to be. And I think because I'm not like swiping it on full on, it just feels dry. So I'm gonna do a little bit of the Alovi Lip Balm. And then I'm gonna kind of pat that in and then I'm going to blot. I do find that this technique of kind of doing micro layers of working product like a stain into the lips, a little bit of lip balm, blot, do that a couple more times. It actually does end up staying quite a while, probably four-ish hours. So I'll wear this and I'll be good until after lunch and then I'll kind of do the same technique at work. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how I've been doing my makeup every day in May. I really have been liking the way that it's been turning out and totally Hannah Mags inspired on the eyes and then just my own kind of proclivity towards bright lipstick in general on the lips. So thank you so much for watching as always. Let me know what your kind of makeup product of the product product or products of the moment have been in May. I hope you guys are having a great week or weekend. No idea when this is going to get uploaded and I'll see you really soon. Bye.